Hello, today we are going to be looking at MuseScore and working with VSTs or VSTIs within MuseScore 4. Now, I can tell you off the bat, it does work. So you can load things up like labs or contact and use that within MuseScore 4. But I will add some VSTs don't quite work how they should, they don't quite communicate or gel well together, I think is the right word. Uh, or at least that's been the case with some plugins I've tried. But contact does work and at labs actually does work as well. I've tested that um, and it does up the quality, although it can be a little bit quiet. You can actually add plugins as well, a bit of EQ if you own any isotope products like ozone, you can mix and master kind of using that as well. I would always recommend uh, actually going into a DAW to do this sort of thing. MuseScore 4 or uh, I guess Sibelius or things like that, software like that, it's great for making scores. But if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of creating high quality sound, I'd always recommend writing it. Yes, be my guest, write it in MuseScore 4, but then export it and whole videos on that into a DAW because that is really where you can get into the nitty gritty bits of the sound. And yes, they do kind of work in this software, but not as flexible as I'd like it to be, or I think it is. Anyway, so there is actually some bits and bobs on the website about this right here, working with VST and VSTIs. As you can see, it's very brief. And I'm sure people have mentioned this in previous videos where I've talked about MuseScore 4. The forums are great. It's a great community. So be my guest to go on there and ask questions because I'm not going to be able to answer everything in this video or in the comments, but I'm sure there are people out there that can. So even if this video is used as a center point where we can gather comments to get these working well within MuseScore 4, let's just do something about it. But I'll tell you at least what I know and how to do what I've done. <laughs> so MuseScore 4, the first thing you can actually do is you need to go into the mixer, which is this little button up here. And as you'll see, you can see already in these bits here, the sound, you've got loaded the MuseScore sounds or uh, general MIDI or whatever. Um, you also see below there audio effects and you can add, as I said, like ozone or just fab filter, other little bits and bobs that you might have, um, which can be very useful. But as you can see over here, I have one on my flute, it's the BBC Symphony Orchestra. And if I click on that, it does actually load the little bit of thing here. And I can change the articulation using key, switch, key switches, which is noted here, which if you're going to print out the score, make sure you delete the key switches because the performer is not going to understand that it's got nothing to do with the performer, which is why I kind of like this sort of thing going into a DAW, but each to their own. Um, the one thing I have found, which is a bit of a problem with BBC Symphony Orchestra within MuseScore is the velocity doesn't translate as I will now demonstrate. So up here we have our flute. If I scroll across, here we are. As we can see, it goes from quiet to loud and we can't hear this. Uh, let's just actually put that back on the screen and press play so I can show it. Make sure it's silent, soloed, not silenced, and nothing else is soloed as well. Okay, so let's put that there, put that there. We'll just decrease that for now and press play and you'll see what I mean. So right there, it doesn't translate, which is a problem, especially if you're going to spend up to nearly a thousand pounds on this little piece of software in a freebie piece of software just for it not to work properly is a huge problem. But what you will find is it will work in contact actually completely. So if we go over to uh, it's violin two, I put contact on, make sure we unsolo that and scroll all the way back. Uh, we can see here, contact, we click on that. I've got our little patch loaded there. It's just the short spiccatos and we can see we have a bit of a crescendo there. So let's just press play on that, make sure it's soloed and you'll see that it does work. The crescendo works and it does go up. Um, you do have to be, well, the devil's in the details. You've got to really put your dynamic markings in for it to work, but I'm rambling. Let's press play. So 
So you can see right there, it does work, which is awesome. And that is a big improvement personally on MuseScore's own. If we actually, just for demonstration purposes, go back in there, put MuseScore's strings, we'll go with a solo, do a side-by-side -side comparison, and just do that exact same bit played, but with theirs. We'll see what you think, go from the beginning. A little bit pitchy there for some reason as well, but that's the MuseScore sound up against Spitfire Solo Strings, which is like three, 400 pounds. Um, I think you can get it closer to the 200 pound mark on a sale. Personally, I think it's better. Is it worth free compared to two, 300 pounds? I don't know, especially if you're gonna use it with the MuseScore 4, but you can do it and contact works extremely well. As you can see, crescendos work, the dynamics markings work. Now, if you want something a bit more free, Labs does work within it as well. So if we now go and change, let's go for our first violin this time around, go in to Spitfire Audio and select their labs. And it just crashed. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I caught that on um, tape um, because MuseScore 4 can be temperamental and I have updated it to the latest one. I'm keeping that in. <laughs> Uh, the previous session was quit unexpectedly. Do you want to restore it? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I caught that. I actually recorded this previously and um, for some reason my screen didn't record. So this is a second take. Um, so I'm kind of glad we did re-record this because that's a good demonstration. Um, and now it's not wanting to load. <sighs> Time lapse? <laughs> Me trying to get this to load again? Oh, there we go. Okay. Right, fingers crossed. I have done this before. I have opened labs up, so it's it's not the fact that I'm trying to load labs that's making it crash. Um, let's try this again, and fingers crossed nothing goes wrong. Otherwise, we might have to leave it there. Labs, please don't crash. There we go. It's working. Okay, so uh, strings and shorts. So we've got our shorts loaded. This is the patch. Let's shrink it. We've put it on our violin one, which is here. We can see we've got a bit of, a, I say an extreme crescendo, but it really does show if it's working or not. Make sure that is actually soloed, nothing else is. And press play. So what I hope you heard there is the crescendo didn't work, but the dynamic markings did work. So it's an in-between of the two. We had the orchestral tools where, it, not orchestral tools, sorry, uh, BBC Symphony Orchestra where it did nothing. I saw it just kept it. This one has at least kept the dynamic markings, but not done the crescendos, but contact, 100%, everything kind of worked really well in there. Um, it's, I wanna say it's worth trying before you're buying. <laughs> Uh, but I guess you can't, you know, you don't know until you've bought the product and put it in whether it's going to work or not. If, it, if it's within contact, I can almost guarantee it will work. But other things, I don't know, which is why I say use a DAW because you don't know how well these things are going to work with the Muse score. And not only that, are you really using the plugin to its fullest extent with the Muse score when within a DAW, you can really get into the nitty gritty, work the expression, work the modulation. Personally, I don't know how to work these knobs with a Muse score. I'm sure somebody does. If they do, leave it down in the comments, unless you can't at all, um, then that's a problem. So I'm sure there's a way Please leave it in the comments for other people to know. I will pin that comment or at least add it to the description or do another video, one or the other. I'm trying to help people have more access to free stuff. Um, but right here, MuseScore 4, free, labs free. You're going to definitely get an improvement in sound um, if you can get everything working well. Really, it's hard to say if everything will work using this method. You've got Sign Player as well. That's a free lot of plugins so you can try and see if Sign works. Um, I guess let's just try it quickly actually. Why not? Let's just change labs out. Uh, orchestral Tool Sign Player. Didn't crash it. That's a first. Um, I say a first. That's a improvement. Uh, and then they've got their free stuff here. Sign Factory. Beautiful set of strings. They have the Helix. Bra whole string ensemble, 
Mercato and performance. Ah, let's see if we can shrink this and just press play. So it's this one. Okay. So similar to labs, it's not noting the crescendo. Is that because the, no, the crescendo is linked to that one, but it's noting the dynamics. Well, there you have it. At least we know it kind of works, but we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Leave anything I've kind of missed out in the comments if you know at least more about this than I do I'll leave a link to this page as well which will get you all the other stuff associated with VSTs and MuseScore and thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next video